Hello, and welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Don Giovanni. Don Giovanni is an opera sung in Italian, composed by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, with a libretto by his trusty librettist da Lorenzo da Ponte. It is thus written in the classical style, but Mozart also has his own distinct style, being that it is vocally demanding, but yet full of very clean musical lines, very symmetrical, and with a balance between arias and recitative, or the dialogue-like parts of an opera. At the beginning of the opera, we meet Don Giovanni's servant, Leporello, who is sick of working for Don Giovanni. He is sick of doing all the grudge work, working late hours, not getting good meals, and he has resolved to leave him. However, we meet Don Giovanni a few moments later, fleeing from yet another of his trysts. Donna Anna is fighting him off for a variety of possible reasons, and it depends on each singer what exactly those are going to be, but he persists in trying to pursue her and also escape. In so doing, he causes such a ruckus that he awakens and then kills Donna Anna's father. Throughout the rest of the opera, Don Giovanni is fleeing Donna Anna and her fiancé, Don Ottavio, his spurned ex-girlfriend, Donna Elvira, and even at times, Leporello, all while trying to seduce more women, including the young Zerlina at her own wedding. He cannot escape the consequences of his actions, however, and those consequences arrive in a spectacular gothic showdown of a finale. This opera is a retelling of the Don Juan story, who is, of course, the ultimate Spanish seducer. Each version of the story sticks to that much truth, but the rest of the plot, and indeed the ending, can vary a little. This version may possibly be my favorite, Based on my summary, of course, and my summary of Don Giovanni's character, it may sound completely despicable by modern standards, but it can also be quite funny, very eerie, and mind-blowingly relevant. Let me persuade you why. The first major musical moment to look out for is the overture itself. I have linked a clip down below of an orchestra playing through the overture, and it begins with very striking, very scary minor chords, and these foreshadow the opening of the final scene. We then hear some scales in the woodwinds, some minor scales going up and down, which you also hear in the finale. And it's as though we're starting at the end of the opera, but then the overture takes a turn and it starts getting brighter and happier. So it's as though we're rewinding. They've shown you a glimpse of what the end is going to be and now we're rewinding so you can get filled in on the beginning of the story. However, those same upbeat musical patterns are repeated later with a slight minor twist to them, signifying that it's not all fun and games at the beginning either there are some dark moments ahead. Perhaps my favorite piece of trivia about the overture is that Mozart wrote it the night before Don Giovanni premiered, which is pretty darn impressive. And yes, for all you fellow procrastinators out there, you can use that as justification for doing things at the last minute. Honestly, you could analyze every single aria, every single duet, every single moment in this opera, and I'm sure people have, but we don't have nearly that much time in this video, so I have had to narrow it down to a couple of my favorites. The next major moment in Act One, for me, is Donna Elvira's opening aria, A Chi Mi Dice Mai, or Oh, Who Will Tell Me. I have linked a track of this down below as well, along with the lyrics. 
and the track is sung by the incomparable Joyce Di Donato. Donna Elvira thought she had married Don Giovanni, but then he abandoned her very quickly, and she has been searching for him ever since. And the opening chords of this aria give you so much to work with. First you have quick staccato chords and quick little runs, then into longer chords that are octave jumps. And all of that, to me, speaks to Donna Elvira's emotional world, which is a combination of things, honestly. It's anger, it's confusion, it's despair, it's love, it's anger at herself. It's just a storm of feelings. And the music brings that to life so beautifully. Plus, there's the opening syllable of the aria. It doesn't just start off with, chi mi dice mai, who can tell me? It starts with, ah, chi mi dice mai, that ah gives so much room for emotion. She is spitting out every single word. And in that first line, ah, chi mi dice mai, quel barbaro dove? There's so many wonderful consonants to chew on and to really spit out her words. You can have such fun acting this piece. And the final thing to point out is that Don Giovanni has hidden himself around a corner to observe her. And so he can't see her. He doesn't realize that this is Donna Elvira. But he keeps interjecting little things. Oh, poor thing, poor baby. And all of his little interjections give you insight quite quickly, in case it wasn't clear already, as to how he truly treats women. So the ultimate question I would pose to you with this aria is, how does Donna Elvira feel? Is she angry? Is she sad? Is she still in love with him? Is it all of the above? You be the ultimate judge. Later on in that same scene, it is revealed to Don Giovanni and Donna Elvira that they have met again. She is thrilled and also very angry at him and he is desperate to escape, which he does by putting the onus on Leporello and saying, explain to her what I am like and why this will never work, which Leporello does in the next aria, Madamina il catalogo e questo, or Madam the list is thusly. I have included a video down below featuring Luca Pizzaroni as Leporello and Barbara, and Barbara Fritoli as Donna Elvira, though Donna Elvira doesn't get to sing anything in this aria, but the aria is delivered to her, so she gets to react to everything that Leporello has to tell her. I have also included the lyrics down below, as almost all of the clips that I've found have subtitles in French, which if you speak French, is fantastic, but in case you don't, I have included some English translations as well. And essentially, the list that Leporello is telling Don Elvira about is quite literally Don Giovanni's little black book. It is the list that Leporello has kept of all of the women that Don Giovanni has ever seduced. And it is a linguistic feat to perform this aria. It is very, very wordy and it is fast. So because this is Leporello's showpiece, the orchestration is really pretty simple, but it still expresses an awful lot. For example, it begins with just rhythmic fast eight notes, eighth notes on a variety of chords, which both lets Leporello's torrent of words shine, but it also gives a sense of urgency, of something racing, be that racing emotions or racing words. He then goes on to describe exactly who Don Giovanni has seduced over the years. And in fact, you can do math and figure out exactly how many women Don Giovanni has slept with because Leporello gives you numbers of how many women he has had in each country they have visited. I'll pause for a moment in case you want to go watch the video and do that math for yourself. Are you ready for the answer? The final total of Leporello's count is 2,065 women. After that, 
Leporello describes why Don Giovanni likes various kinds of women. Now, Don Giovanni is very egalitarian. He will like anything in a skirt, but he likes them all for different reasons. In that section, there are wonderful opportunities for word painting. So the notes and the dynamics, what the music is doing really helps to illustrate the word itself. The best example of this is when Leporello describes why Don Giovanni likes tall women. Tall women to him, he says, are majestic. And so on the word maestosa, maestosa is repeated a couple of times on gradually higher and higher notes, but on long notes. And it ends on a seven beat high B. So that really gives you the sense of something very large, something growing, and also something very grand. However, the next sentence is that Don Giovanni also likes small women for I forget what reason, but in order to switch to talking about smaller women, he takes the word piccina and it's repeated on many, many, many descending 16th notes. So the word itself feels smaller and smaller and smaller, and the music is going lower and lower and lower. It's really incredible composition, and it's such fun to watch. And as a singer, you can have so much fun with this aria because of it. The next aria may be the most well-known, certainly from Don Giovanni, if not from all opera, which is La ci darem la mano, or There you will give me your hand. I have attached a video down below of Moika Erdmann and Marius Gwitschen as Don Giovanni and Serlina, respectively. This is, on the surface, a very simple duet. Musically, it is fairly simple. Certainly, melodically, it is very simple. And the text is fairly simple and fairly straightforward. Don Giovanni has met the young country girl, Serlina, at her wedding and is convincing her to go with him to his castle and he will marry her there instead of her new fiancé, husband, whatever stage of the relationship she and Mazzetto are. It's never entirely clear whether they've just gotten married or they are going to be married. And yet, even though melodically it is very simple, it is utterly perfect. Each phrase, it feels very conversational. Don Giovanni has a phrase, Zerlina has a phrase. They go back and forth trading phrases. And those phrases fit perfectly into one another, melodically speaking, but they are still utterly distinct. There's also a lot of opportunity to not only take it at an andante tempo, so a relatively laid back tempo, but also great opportunities to be very legato, especially for Don Giovanni. The more you lengthen out and smooth out your phrases, the more seductive a sound quality you get, and the more sense you get that he is smooth talking, Serlina. In a similar way, when Serlina repeats non son più forte, when she starts to weaken a little bit, there are lots of accidentals in that repeated phrase, which really makes her feel very wobbly harmonically speaking, so we really feel her uncertainty. So therefore, just like the other arias I've mentioned, because the melody and the words are already so evocative, it allows for a lot of really wonderful acting to happen. The next moment to be on the lookout for is another of the big moments in the opera, which is Fink an dal vino, which is Don Giovanni's big moment. This is sometimes also known as the Champagne Aria. This comes from a tradition that developed in the opera world for Don Giovanni to swig a glass of champagne quite quickly before it begins, and then leap into this galloping tongue twister of an aria, and then throw away the glass at the end of it. And when I say it is a galloping tongue twister, I mean it. First of all, this aria is very, very short. It is under a minute and a half and therefore it is at a frenzied speed, and it is full of very complicated words that you have to get out quite quickly. It is fun 
because it gives us a glimpse into Don Giovanni's hedonistic side, which, I mean, we all know it's there. It's pretty much out in the open, but this really puts it out there. But it also gives us a glimpse into his carelessness. Yes, the aria is talking about treat everyone well. I want wine. I want girls, girls, girls. But it doesn't matter what girls they are, as long as there are lots. In la piazza, qualquer ragazza. In the piazza, take whatever girl is there. I don't care. However, the enthusiasm with which he sings it almost draws you in, even though you know he is a terrible person and he is treating people horribly. And this thus is still able to demonstrate Don Giovanni's seductive power, which you have to understand in order to understand the struggles that all of the other women, and indeed Leporello, face within the opera themselves and to be able to sympathize with it. So that is perhaps the pinnacle of Don Giovanni's arias. However, the other pinnacle is at the complete opposite side of the spectrum musically. And that is De Vieni a la Finestra, or Come to the Window. And I have attached a video down below of Peter Mattei singing this aria at a benefit concert, I believe, along with the lyrics. The reason why I love this aria is that it is utterly simple. Indeed, it is written as though it were a folk song, something that Don Giovanni would realisti realistically hire someone to play for him so that he could serenade one of his new conquests with it. And so thus, on stage, you just have Don Giovanni, and in the orchestra, you have one mandolin player. Here again, the legato, the legato is key to making this seductive. You have to have long, smooth phrases in order to really make the simplicity shine and to, again, help us understand why so many women fall for Don Giovanni. Something I only just noticed recently, however, is that this music sounds as though it's a waltz. You could sit there and count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But in fact, when you look at the score, it's written in four, four time. Now there's a name for that when something in four, four time sounds like three, four. And I tried to look it up and I could not find it. If you know what that name is, please let me know in the comments down below because it will drive me crazy. But to me, that musical technique is yet another symbol of Don Giovanni's deceptiveness. It sounds as though it's one thing, but it's actually something else. Now, I tried very hard not to include this because I try very hard not to include spoilers in any of these videos. However, the keystone to Don Giovanni is its ending. It is so perfect and so mind-blowing that I could not resist talking about it. So I will put a card up on the screen that says spoiler when I begin to talk about it, and I will remove it at the end when I finish talking about it. So if you want to go ahead and watch this for yourself with no idea what the ending is, then you can pause the video now and skip ahead to the end when I give you production recommendations and my ultimate summary. If you'd like to stick around for my thoughts about the finale though, here they are. I have attached a video down below of Marius Kvitschen and Luca Pizzaroni as Don Giovanni and Leporello in the Mets production from 2011. And I'm terribly sorry, but I don't remember who sang the role of the Commendatore. I have also attached a document with lyrics down below. So this moment opens with those same terrifying minor chords that we heard at the beginning of the overture. This is what they were foreshadowing. They are the presages of Don Giovanni's doom, because there in the doorway, the statue of Donna Anna's father, the Commendatore, which was on top of his grave, is on Don Giovanni's doorstep. It has come to life. It has accepted his offer of coming to dinner. 
and it is here for him. And here again, compositionally, it is brilliant because the commendatore, though sung by a human being, is a statue. And so everything that he sings is very straight, even, slow rhythms. There are no eighth notes, there are no dotted rhythms, it's just quarter notes, whole notes, half notes. Everything very slow and precise and easy to count. Which speaks to the fact that he's made of stone. He's not going to have a skippy melody. He and Don Giovanni then have a negotiation as Leporello cowers in terror of what is about to happen and the Commendatore offers him an ultimatum. This is his last chance to change his ways. And Don Giovanni, being ever the cynic, declines. Or rather, he decides to test his fate and say, yes, I'll come to dinner with you, Commendatore. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing's really going to happen. Well, as he seals his fate, we begin to hear those scales in the woodwinds again which are the whirling winds that he describes and the tearing hands that he feels and the howls that he hears and slowly things start to build and build and suddenly there are a chorus of demons with him who especially in this production but in any production take on the sound of a requiem mass it's a very dies ire kind of sound to what they are singing. And the very fast rhythms of Don Giovanni and Leporello are at odds with each other and at odds with those of the demons and the ghost of the Commendatore. And it creates this wonderful hellish counterpoint. And it speaks to the utter chaos that is erupting in the room. And the ending itself is just incredibly emotionally powerful, especially in this production. You just need to watch it. So I will let you watch the rest of that clip. Ultimately to me, this opera speaks to the experience of sexual harassment and manipulation, both the feelings of the victims and the perpetrators, and does not let the guilty parties go unpunished but it explores both sides in a very nuanced way, I think, which is what makes it so brilliantly, if not tragically relevant still today. If you are looking to watch or listen to a production for yourself, I would recommend several. First, I would recommend the 2011 production from the Metropolitan Opera starring Marius Kvitschen, Luca Pizzaroni, Barbara Fritoli, among others. In addition, if you can't access any of the video productions, I would recommend this audio production from Deutsche Grammophon, starring Ildebrando D'Arcangelo, Vitali Kowalio, I do apologize if I mispronounce that name, Diana Damrau, Rolando Viasson, Joyce Di Donato, Luca Pizzaroni, Konstantin Wolf, and Moika Erdmann. I love this production A for all of the wonderful and talented singers who are in it, but in addition, these editions come with a booklet with the libretto translated into four different languages. You have the original lyrics in Italian, and they have also been translated into German, English, and French. So you have a good shot of understanding at least one of those languages and thus following the action and the emotions of the singers. I would also recommend any production starring Peter Mattei as Don Giovanni. I was lucky enough to see him in the Metropolitan Opera production in 2000. 18 or 2019. I think it was the spring of 2019. And he was brilliant. He was one of the best Don Giovanni's I have ever seen. So if you can find a production starring him, definitely do it. If you have thoughts about Don Giovanni, please leave them down below. I would love to hear of them. If you have other questions about it, or if you have other comments, or just anything to say about Don Giovanni, 
please let me know down below. I would love to chat with you. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy listening. Bye everyone.